What's up, EuroLeague fans out there? Welcome to another episode of A Quarter with Kyle Hines. Today, we have a very, very special guest, one of the most dynamic and best scorers of our, all of EuroLeague, Red Star Zone, Jordan Lloyd. Jordan, what's going on, man? How's everything? Oh, man, thanks for that wonderful introduction, man. It's going good, man. Thanks for having me. Good, man. First of all, how's everything? How, how are you dealing with everything um, there in Belgrade, Serbia? Man, it's going pretty good. You know, despite, you know, obviously all the COVID restrictions, you know, the, the city's great. Uh, people have been great so far. Um, and, you know, it's been, it's been fun to play so far, even though we're missing the fans. But uh, overall, you know, I can't complain. Now we got to go back a little bit um, because you achieved something that, you know, all Hoopers dream about. And that's being a member, you know, of the of the Toronto Raptors, uh, you know, oh, World yeah. Championship basketball team. So let's talk about that experience a little bit. You know, what was it like to, you know, to to be a, a champion and going through that, that experience with that team? Oh, man. Uh, first thing that comes to mind is just like God's timing. You know, it was, mm-hmm. I'm just so fortunate to have honestly just been a part of the team. You know, I was a two way guy. I uh, got a little chance to, you know, to to play a little bit, but just being around the guys and uh, you know, they put they put a hell of a team together, you know, with Kawhi, you know, Pascal was emerging and you got Kyle Lowry and uh, Gasol. So it was uh, it was a pleasure for me just to go to the gym, be around the guys, learn what I could. And then we started winning. <laughs> and then, you know, I don't think anybody thought we would get a ring that year. Um, but it was just a crazy ride. Crazy to be there and happy that I could, you know, contribute to help them achieve that goal. Uh, my dad is a diehard Sixers fan. So when oh, Kawhi man. hit that shot on Game Seven, man, he 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 still talks about that to this day, man. Still uh, no talks about to this day how I broke his heart. <laughs> oh yeah, for now, sure. That's going. That's that forever, forever. Now where where do you keep your championship ring? You got it on you right now? Are you wearing it or are you? Uh, no, where, where, no, where no you... I don't. <laughs> uh, I, honestly, I don't even know where I would even wear that thing to, man. But I keep it. At, I keep it at the crib, man. Somewhere, somewhere close to the house in a secure place. Uh, so, yeah, <laughs> undisclosed location. Yeah, the undisclosed vault. You know, somewhere in, in Georgia, man. <laughs> now, you know, last season you, you started your your rookie campaign in Euroleague in Valencia. So let's talk about you know the the transition. You know, coming from you know the NBA being a two way player and being on a championship championship team to now going to you know competing in, in the Euroleague with Valencia. What was that experience like for you? Oh, it was it was great. I mean, I, I pride myself on being able to adapt, you know, to any situation that I get put into. And, you know, Spain was a great, a great place to start EuroLeague. I was around a bunch of talented players, you know, great coaches. And uh, I learned a lot, saw a lot, you know, saw how the game was played, you know, how different it was and how physical it was. Um, but, you know, I think I had a pretty smooth transition. Like I said, luckily, I had great guys around me that made it made it pretty easy uh, in Valencia. Now, my favorite part about EuroLeague basketball in comparison to the NBA um, is that here, every game matters. You know, you don't matter where, who you play, you know, yeah. when you play, every game matters. So to you, what is your favorite part about EuroLeague basketball? I think you might have said it. I mean, I, I think it's so crazy how every possession is like do or die, you know. Yeah. And it's a little bit different than it probably was, you know, for me in the G League. But like. Every possession uh, is do or die, man. And, and also, I think the best part, like, experiencing the fans, like, traveling to all these cool cities that I would have never dreamed of going to and playing in, you know, full arenas was – that was, that was like, the best part for me, you know, and having just the atmosphere uh, and, the you know, playing in front of those in, – in front of the fans last year was – it was that was probably my favorite part. Now, this summer, um, you know, kind of like me, you know, you decided to, you know, make, make the switch to a new team. So what was it about – um, you know, Red Star um, in Belgrade, Serbia, that made you want to, you know, join the team this upcoming summer? Uh, you know, it was a, you know, I, it was kind of a crazy summer, but I think more so is just, you know, I had good friends like Lorenzo Brown that played here last year and mm-hmm. um, other people that I could talk to about it. And it was just, I've seen them come here and do great things, you know, for the organization. And I think it's just a great place to, you know, come and uh, you know, showcase what you can really do, you know, on, on the EuroLeague level and, and try to help exactly. you wins. And I think it was a perfect place, uh, you know, to to come for me where I was at in my career. You know, the coaching staff at the time, you know, they, they talked to me and, you know, it just seemed like a really good situation. And 
uh, I went with it, you know, kind of really wasn't even a, a afterthought, you know, so, um, you know, I'm always stand by my decision. I was really happy with it so far, too. So it's been good. Now, now Belgrade is called and for me, Belgrade is definitely one of my favorite cities to to go and visit and to play in because the, the people there, the city there has such a, a basketball history. You know, it's called the basketball yeah. capital of Europe. So, you know, so how you enjoy, you know, being in Belgrade and, 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 and so much history, so much basketball history there that's in the city. It's great. Uh, you know, I had a teammate last year, uh, Vanya Marinkovic, who played with me in, in, uh, mm-hmm. in Valencia, and he's from Belgrade. And I had so many guys, you know, I didn't know much about it. Um, but when I first traveled, you know, to Belgrade last year and saw the, the fans, you know, there was police with the riot gear when you get to the arena. <laughs> um, and it was it was crazy, but I loved it. You know, I was like, man, this is insane, you know, for basketball. Yeah. Uh, you know what I'm saying? But you know, the fans, they, they, they know the game, you know, the, the people know the game here. They're really, they're really smart. You know, they're passionate. You got to love it. You got to love how passionate they are, how much they care, how much they want to win. And, you know, nobody's going to be harder on myself than, than I am. But uh, to have those people, even though they're not in the stands this year, you know, the messages of support is unbelievable. Mm-hmm. I mean, since I've since I've arrived and I've received so much love and, and everything, even the good and bad times. Uh, so it just makes you want to go that much harder. So it's been it's been pretty interesting. Now, is there something about Belgrade off the court? For me, going to Belgrade, seeing how beautiful the city is, the aesthetics, the, you know, the castle in the center, the, the rivers, and even the food. I mean, is there something about off the court that has surprised you about Belgrade? I mean, the size of the city, you know, like I didn't, it's, it's pretty, pretty big city. And yeah. I'm fortunate enough to, to kind of live by the river and uh, get a chance to walk around. So it's a lot of good places to, to be outside. And I, I love being outdoors. And, you know, especially, like I said, with the COVID stuff, you know, anytime you can get outdoors, walk around, it's nice. You know, there's a lot of stuff to see, a lot of sightseeing, things like that. So uh, that kind of surprised me. The food is, is super good. You know, you got to I got to be careful. Can't just be eating all the good food all the time. So it's <laughs> it's uh, the food's been really good, though. Uh, can't complain, man. And I have I mean, I got college teammates that actually are from out here that I've been able to see. And oh, wow. They they, you know, embrace their culture and, and eat some of the food from here. And it's been cool, man. So I try to embrace every everywhere i go that's, that's amazing man that's amazing i'm glad you're taking the opportunity to do that now to me um you know this has been and a lot of people have said it, this you, you're one of the breakout performers of this year um you know me seeing you play last year and me you know knowing you i knew you were nice but i didn't know you was you know that nice <laughs> i didn't know you. <laughs> Uh, like I that. appreciate so, that. You know, so you know, so what was your? It seemed like you know, and I know there was you know a little bit of talk about you know that there was a list at the beginning of the year, and they kind of rated you a little bit lower than you than you know most people thought you were. But you know, what was your mentality going into the season? Because it seemed like you know you were just out to kind of prove you know a lot of people that you know that you belong and that you can play at this level. Yeah, uh, you know, I've, ever since high school, I've always had basically a chip on my shoulder. I've kind of been that guy who's. I guess, always been overlooked. You know, I wasn't heavily recruited yeah. out of high school and things like that. So I think naturally I just kind of have that competitive edge about me. And then, uh, you know, after last year, I felt, you know, I had so much that I wanted to give and show. And I really couldn't, you know. You know obviously the season got cut short. You know, I was hurt for a little bit and things like that. So I already was looking forward to the next year in, in January of last year. So, yeah. um, and then, the, I mean, obviously, I, I don't pay too, too much to, to rankings, you know, but with all the fans here, all the messages and on social media, man, they all send it to you saw this, you saw this. <laughs> and that's just, you know, that's just extra motivation for me, you know, even though it's not a big deal because I don't, you know, it is what it is. Uh, but, yeah, obviously extra motivation. And I think, you know, I just see, you know, guys like yourself and, you know, how, the great careers you guys have had and, and are having. Sure. And I want to be a part of that. You know what I'm saying? And I, and I know I can be. And I just I just owe it to, to myself, you know, to the game to just, you know, go every night and prove what I can do. So I just wanted to, you know, wake some people up. You know, I had a lot of a lot of doubters, in, whether it's back home or, or out here and it just gives you extra motivation. Yeah, man. Keep going, man, because you're, you're definitely you're definitely doing your thing out there, man. So. Also, man, you know, you, you mentioned a little bit, you know, about, you know, the, the the famous, you know, Belgrade fans, the famous Red Star fans, you know. So mm-hmm. how much are you missing, you know, not being able to, you know, play with the fans and not, you know, not being able to experience about, you know, the famous yeah. atmosphere? Uh, so much, man. I mean, I like I, that's like everything here, you know, the, pan, the, yeah. the fans and the derby games and, you know, all of that. But it's it would be like I said, luckily, I was able to come here last year and kind of see a little bit of it. 
Um, but like I said, they, they, they send a lot of messages and things like that. And we just kind of owe it to them, you know, since they can't come to the games I, and I know they really want to, you know what I'm saying? So we try to go out there and just give it our all and, and bring that own energy, you know, from within the team. And, uh, but trust me, I, I, I'm missing it. I, I don't know if there's going to be anything like that this year, but hopefully, you know, you can, you can, you can pray about it, wish on it. You know, I would love for them to yeah. get in the arena. Yeah. Yeah, man, we all are, man. Especially, I mean, that's yeah, that's one sure. of my favorite. That's one of my favorite places to play at, man. Like, I've, I've experienced so many games and so many great games there, and that atmosphere is like, I'm always circling on my calendars. Like, okay, when we play Red Star, when we play, when we go to Buffalo, right. it's something I'm different, right. man. Some something different. What do you guys have to do, you know, during this second part, you know, of the regular season to kind of get you, get you, get yourself uh, in in the mix of this uh, this playoff race? Yeah, I mean, we just. You know, it's been tough. You know, we've had a couple changes, things like that, you know, but just try to build chemistry, I believe. I yeah. think once everybody can get on the court and, and, and be together, practice together and um, just play, I think it's going to help. And obviously we got to, you know, be able to execute, you know, down the stretch. We've had so many close games that we weren't able to pull out <laughs> this year. Um, and that's your league. You know, every night's tough. And yeah. That's how it is. But, um, you know, I, I, like I said earlier, uh, I think I, I think we have a great team. And I think the more we play together, uh, we got great coaching staff as, as well, and the more we play together, I think it'll it'll contribute to to wins uh, down the line. That's good, man. That's good. So the the last question I have for you before we wrap up the quarter, um, you know, what is your message to the Euroleague fans, you know, out there? You know, I like obviously said we're missing them. We're not playing, you know, um, in front of them in the arenas right now. But you know, if you can say, you know, a couple words to them to kind of encourage them and kind of show your support, what would that be? Uh, first and foremost, probably not even dealing with basketball, just uh, hope everyone is, is staying healthy and keeping their mind mm-hmm. right and as positive as can be. You know, there's so many bigger things in basketball going on in the world right now. So I just hope that that, you know, all the fans that love the game and give love to it, you know, as a player, we want to give the love right back. Um, and we miss we miss all the fans. We hope uh, to, to get you back in the arena soon. And uh, we just appreciate all the support through the, the up and down times as well. So, uh, you know, fans is the reason we play basketball honestly you know we love it it's one of the one of the reasons at least and um, we love them for that so uh, miss you guys and see you soon all right man i'm gonna let you go i know you got a you know a busy day ahead of you you know getting ready for practice and all that but i appreciate you taking the time um you know best of luck you know stay healthy and i look forward to you you know continuing to get buckets out there this year hey man i appreciate it. thanks again for having me man really do this is dope man. thanks thank you All the fans, thank you so much for watching. This has been another episode of The Quarter. We look forward to seeing you all again soon.